Hey guys, welcome back to SimTech channel. In this tutorial on the basics of power flow analysis or load flow analysis using Dixile and Power Factory. So this is uh, part three, right, of this tutorial. So on part one, we basically saw the basics of what we need in order to execute a load flow analysis or load flow calculation. And on part two, we went through the detail of drawing this network as you see on your screen so if you would like to go through the process of how we got to this point please watch part one and part two of this tutorial otherwise you should be absolutely good to go so in this uh tutorial part three we basically going to zoom into this network as you see here right so towards the end of part two i mentioned already that we've got some problem here as you can see this network right so already the red color is usually always a problem so if we do not want to see red colors on our network we basically need to fix the problems that already exist on our network now before we go into the detail let's first just look into these uh, spectrums of color here okay so we've got the lower voltage ranges so it tells us that from 1 per unit to 0 0.9 per unit the colors have green and blue. Now remember, okay, so the main point of running a load flow analysis is to determine the voltage at the bus level. Those were some of the unknowns that we were after. So now, after executing our calculations, we can see that the bus voltages are all not the same. And we got a nice spectrum here to exactly display it to us. And we also have on the upper voltage range, that is from 1 per unit to 1.1 per unit. Now, when we look at already at the center of the screen here, bus bar 8, okay? So it's yellow, right? You can see it's yellow, which means it falls under this spectrum here. So when we look at, uh, we zoom into the bus bar uh, parameters, we can see that the nominal per unit voltage is 1.06 per unit, okay? And in terms of voltage, it's 242.7 kilovolt. Now, remember this bus bar is supposed to be running on the transmission line that is rated at 230 kilovolt. But we are sitting with a voltage of 242.7 kilovolt, which is definitely higher than what it was spec for. So, we've got problems. We have to resolve these problems. Otherwise, the network will become unstable on a long run. Then we also have some of the loading ranges here. As always, red is not good. So we got a range of 80% to 100% loading, right? Now remember, for electronics and electrical component, you must avoid overloading or loading your, your, your equipment to 80%. It's basically its capability, okay? So right now, quickly, here we can see that this transformer here, T3, T3 got a 133% overload on it. That's a problem, okay? We are supposed to actually accept uh, a loading below 80%, right? 75 or even 80, we can still accept that. But as soon as we start to go above 80, we are approaching the red zone, 100% load loading, that basically there's no room for the transformer to breathe. Now, depending on the type of cooling of this transformer, whether it's a force air cool or whether it's a ventilation and all that sort, this transformer will be working over time and it's only a matter of time before it actually explodes and you've got the entire bus bus system here going down. So that's a problem that we will have to attend to. Then if you come on this side, the same situation, we've got T2 that's also overloaded, okay? Why is it overloaded? Obviously, you are drawing more than the transformer can supply. Okay, if we double click into this transformer, okay, let's first stop uh, the, the load flow and double click. And we come to the type here, we can see that this transformer is 200 MVA. Okay, 200 MVA, that's the rating of the transformer. But when you look into the primary, right, the, 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 the power coming on the primary, there is a 163 megawatt and we got a reactive power of 
now if you do the sum of that basically if you calculate your s using your p and q you're going to get a value that is way above the 200 mva that the transformer is rated for this is why it is overloaded and that's a problem that must also be addressed elsewhere on the network we've got greens and blue and stuff okay that is acceptable and our lines are not overloaded because remember we uh, spec all our line for one kilo amps okay so it's not overloaded right so if you close this and you check line eight to nine and it says here that it's 38.3 percent overloaded and if we look at the current that's flowing from bus bar 9 to bus bar 8 okay if we look at this current here we got a current of 0 0.383 kilo amps okay so basically 383 amps is flowing and if we double click onto this line again and we change the current rating here to let's say 0 0.3 okay and we say okay okay and then we run the simulation or execute the load flow analysis again now quickly you can see that the line is now 127.6 percent overloaded because we are way above the rating of this overhead line and those are problems okay so that must also be addressed so for this one to be addressed obviously it's very simple you have to go back in there and increase your cable ratings okay and that's going to cost you money and you execute your load flow analysis again and it is back to normal great now before we proceed let's just pause for a moment here and that is basically to say that if you find this tutorial useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel that would be highly appreciated and that would be a best way to support this channel now you know very well that the best way to solve your overloading problem on the transformers here is to increase your transformer capacity okay just as we've done here by increasing the line rating and that make the overloading goes away as you can see overloading is below the 80 percent so it's normal right now if you want to do the same thing here remember it will cost you a lot of money these high voltage transformers are generally very very expensive it is a 200 mva transformer and that's a lot of money to increase the capacity of this transformer now the other thing that you can do here is to basically uh, reduce the loads right the loads on your network but who are you going to cut off from the power supply because you got all sort of uh consumers connected onto the power system network you got residential area you got schools hospitals right and industrial complex that basically needs power to run the economy so which one of those that you're gonna start saying well you are overloading my system so it's not going to where you're gonna cause problem so the on the immediate the best thing you can do is to increase the the transformer capacity okay because that will prevent this transformer and this one from exploding increase the capacity then after increasing the capacity you can look into start charging consumers that are causing reactive power and causing instability in your system because all of this is because of the reactive power because now now look look what's going on here if you see on this bus bar seven okay We've got a real power of 89 megawatt and we've got another real power here of 73.9 uh, megawatt. Now, if you take 89, okay, 89 plus 73, that's going to give you 162 megawatt of real power. But now, if you double click onto this generator, right, and you look at the load flow parameters, we're going to see that this is a 163 megawatt generator so the generator is supplying the real power that it was made to generate okay but look at the reactive power we say 8 megavolt ampere reactive but that actually doesn't matter because we know that this generator is supplying 348 megavolt ampere reactive a whipping 348 mvar 
of reactive power that this generator is supplying all of that is to compensate to the problems on the network right this is why power system network they basically charge consumers for reactive powers so if you're going to connect onto the power system network and you start distorting the power factor then you're going to be charged for that because you're causing system instability now you causing this generator to overwork and that is causing this transformer to basically be overloaded now because of all this instability now we causing this transformer to be overloaded and we've got 163 megawatt of real power that's being drawn and 348 that is being basically generated to compensate uh, the system and stability now the transformer is now overloaded now we know that this transformer is a 200 mva transformer now because the system is generating extra reactive power so that basically make the transformer to be overloaded because we know that mva takes account of the real and reactive power your power triangle so now if we calculate our s here the square root of one six three square okay just one square plus uh what's the reactive power it's 348 okay we know that it's 48 megavolt ampere reactive also square and we say enter you can see what we're getting here so that's 384 megavolt ampere okay 348 mva but the transformer here is only 200 mva so automatically we can see that this transformer is being overloaded so how do you avoid all of that you start charging people for reactive power that they uh, they are dumping onto the system because that's causing problems and camtasia already did all the load flow calculations for us we can basically show the mva here just as we are showing these other variables so we can click on edit format and we come on here edit then we can choose what we want to show here so let's bring in the s mva apparent power click and okay there it is and then we can basically just say okay then automatically we're going to have the apparent power display everywhere as you can see here we've got s is equal to 384 just as we have calculated it but we know that the transformer is only a 200 mva transformer so those are your problems and to remedy that you start clamping down on people who basically distort the power factor on your network right so just to end this tutorial if you want to quickly get rid of this overloading you have to increase your generator rating here okay so basically this generator here uh pump more power basically replace it maybe let's say a 450 megavolt ampere uh, generator then you must also increase the size of your transformer right so these are just what you can do in the immediate okay and let's say we put this also 400 uh, megavolt ampere okay and then you run the load flow analysis again okay now you can see that the loading here changes okay you no longer onto the red zone you more around the 80 percent zone overloading okay so your network all of a sudden is becoming a little bit right the problem are starting to go away but that's not solving your problem that's an expensive way to solve things network expansion other than start fixing and regulating uh the kind of stuff stuff that are connected onto your network now in closing please note that a uh, reactive power they are very important generators they generate reactive powers that is for voltage regulation on your network okay and to basically power factor corrections okay because remember you've got all sort of things that is the uh, that distort the power factor and that cause instability so generator will have to generate reactive power to compensate that and so that there will be grid stability and to compensate on all the line losses right now we basically don't have much of the line losses because our lines are running 
uh, under load. Okay, so they are running very well. So I'm going to stop this now uh, before it really gets too long here. If you want to basically generate the output, you can just come on output here and you let's let's stop this first okay and we come on output calculation then you can choose what you want to generate basically a grid summary for instance then you can generate a grid summary okay then we can basically check our grid summary here we can see that there is a total of 222 megawatt of real power being generated and there is a 274 reactive power okay then our total mva is 353 on the network then you can see the loads on each one of the bus bar okay and we've got an installed capacity of 705 megawatt and there is a spinning reserve of 482 megawatts so that is it guys for this tutorial on the basics of load flow analysis a lot more can be said in these network analysis Stay tuned on to SimTech channel. Make sure you subscribe so that you're going to get many more tutorials of this nature coming up your way. Until next time, cheers.